I'm gonna share with you how I got from this to this in just one month. Besides my love for physics interactions, destruction and absolute carnage, I was also always interested in some less destructive game development topics, one of them being procedural generation. What a better way to get into procedural generation than to throw your old project away and start with a new one. Right? I first started by generating a texture using the one and only Perlin noise. After adding some settings to the generator, I looked out of my window and realized that the terrain outside is not black and white, so that would probably look weird in a game too. Nice observation, I added colors. It didn't take me long to face my next enemy, mesh manipulation. I've never in my entire life done anything related to mesh from the code, but I was very excited about learning this new topic. Not gonna lie, I really enjoyed it. It might become my second favorite topic, first one being, of course, ragdolls. More on that later in the video. So after creating the terrain, I needed a way to control what happens on which part of the terrain. So for example, if I wanted villages to spawn around oases, I needed a way to know where oases are. So I did exactly that. I made a search algorithm that detects one pixel of a certain region and detects all undetected pixels around that one pixel and adds them to a list. This process continues for all the detected pixels until no pixels are left. After finishing with that algorithm, I've moved to actually creating some assets where my prior modeling experience really kicked in. I'm really proud of how these have turned out. Now our hero can enjoy the sun and interact with the environment. The final touch on the terrain was adding the endless sandstorm around the map, which is actually not so endless, but it keeps the player from falling out of the map. After finishing the map generator, I moved to creating our protagonist, First I took my time to draw a concept art of how I wanted him to look and then I moved to the actual modeling. After countless hours of modeling we finally had our hero who will save the world from all the evil. <clears throat> Maybe not, but you must admit that he looks cool. I was going for a combination of a biker and a mercenary with a slight touch of the hero vibe. Let me know what you think about him down in the comments. I doubt that our hero will be able to save the world by just standing in a T pose, so I decided to make a character controller. I made the basic movement which, in my opinion, feels very smooth. Additionally, I've added crouching, jumping, aiming and of course, ragdolls. Who doesn't like ragdolls? One last feature to the character controller was the first person mode, which I've never done in any game. This is my first shot at first person and I think it works so or so well, but I'm really not sure what to think about the ragdoll mode in first person. Do I let the character stay in first person or do I switch to the third person during the ragdoll? The main reason is that it can be very nauseating to be in first person with all that shaking going on. Like always, I'm sharing the roadmap of the game with you. We have cleared these three features and the next dialogue will revolve around realistic injury reactions. Subscribe and join on the journey where we clear the entire roadmap step by step. You probably think that I forgot about Polycalypse. Of course not. You can check out what has happened to my previous project by watching this video here, if you haven't already. In that case, you can play it for free by following the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching guys. See you soon in the next video. Bye.